Good morning. Uh, we'll start off with uh, deed restrictions, one of my favorite topics. Uh, there's a new process. We passed a local law. How many applications have you received? Where are they located and what is their status? That is question one. You may want to grab a pen and paper and Dawn should get uh, join you at the uh, table. Uh, the next question along that line is, uh, in previous hearings, we had conversations about the Deputy Commissioner of Real Estate Services, which was previously occupied by Ricardo Morales. Uh, has this position been filled? When was it filled? And if it was filled, was it an internal or external applicant? Uh, turning over to uh, my question for uh, Deputy Commissioner Don Pinnock, uh, it relates to provisionals, uh, which is the ongoing question. When you started, well, before you started, but when this administration started, uh, we had 22,939 provisionals. As of December of uh, last year, we made it all the way down to 21,060, uh, which is only 1,879 fewer provisionals. Uh, and I will note at the last hearing that I chaired last year for the preliminary budget, there were actually more provisionals working for the city than when they started, despite a commitment to reduce the number of provisionals. Uh, where are we? How are you planning to actually reduce the number of provisionals? And at this point, four years in, I'm curious about what the difference between how, how somebody watching at home right now can get one of these uh, 21,060 provisional jobs since everyone else would have to go take an exam and are these people getting it through advertisements in the New York Times or uh, Craigslist or are they volunteering on political clubs or campaigns? How do people get these provisional uh, positions? And uh, along those lines, uh, we've been pushing uh, DCAS to uh, speed the exam process so that uh, you don't have to wait more than a year. And I think at one point we'd actually gotten it down to a 200 and something days. And uh, now it's uh, 417 days, but then it dropped in the first four months of this fiscal year to 91 days, which is amazing and would love to see that. So uh, those would be my uh, four questions as we head into the Passover season. Sure. Um, we can start with, I guess, in the order that you presented them. Uh, the deed modifications, we are in uh, underway with complying uh, with the new process as required by local law. Uh, we were on time in developing and putting online the initial part of the database uh, request, so that's currently online, and, uh, and we're in compliance. We have received a total of nine uh, deed modification requests in uh, since the passage of the new law. Um, one of them was withdrawn. Two have been able to proceed uh, to, to the point where they have submitted all of the necessary paperwork. Uh, and we have submitted those, uh, that information to the Department of City Planning uh, to begin the consultation as required by the local law uh, to review their requests. So that's where we are with the deed modifications. Uh, with regard to your question on the deputy commissioner positions for what, the- Before you move beyond uh, deed restrictions, so just uh, to, would you provide the list to this organization, to, to this committee? Happy and, to follow up. And then when I hopped on Google just now to type in NYC deed restrictions, it takes me to a, a landing page that then, it, on, that says property deeds and other documents and then it directs me to ACRIS and then that's not helpful. Does somebody have the URL so that somebody watching at home is at nyc.gov slash deed restrictions? We will get that information. They're pulling it up, but we will, we will. And it's on the open data portal or is it? It is on the open data okay. portal. So moving on to your second question regarding the deputy commissioner positions of asset management. Um, if you recall, uh, we restructured that line of service and split it in two. We have uh, now two deputy commissioners that split the portfolio that originally was one. Uh, we have a deputy commissioner for facilities management and a deputy commissioner for real estate services. Uh, after a search, uh, we posted, we interviewed a number of candidates. Uh, we selected uh, two internal candidates who had been uh, put, who had been doing the job in an acting capacity, um, and they're here today, uh, Deputy Commissioner Laura Ringelheim and Deputy Commissioner Jerry Torres. 
for facilities management, Jerry Torres, Laura Winkleheim, uh, real estate. Um, moving on to your questions on provisionals. Yes, well, we started the uh, pro provisional reduction plan. Uh, we had approached the state and requested two years in order to uh, reduce the number of provisionals, not eliminate them. Uh, the stated target was uh, a little north of 17,000 uh, provisionals by the end of this calendar year. So our baseline of 23,296 at the end of 2016, that was our baseline. Our current uh, status is 21,052, so that's a reduction of over 2,000 uh, provisionals. And that's been done, that's been accomplished by a number of mechanisms. Uh, through increased number of exams in FY18, we had, have administered, or will have administered over 270 exams, which is the highest number of exams that the agency has administered. Um, uh, and certainly for farther above the FY19 uh, administration of 199 exams. So we're, we're, we're moving on a number of paths. Um, part of the, uh, and we're, we're, we're doing, and we're, on, we're on pace to meet our stated goal of, of 17,000 provisionals. We have always had the intention and the state clearly understands that we have to come back uh, for an additional time. Um, we are working, the only way to hire not provisionally is to, pro, to administer tests, generate lists, and have those lists available to, um, to agencies to hire. Um, we have over 800 titles. We, are, we're not, we don't have the capacity to give 800, title, 800 exams a year. Uh, so there has to be uh, a mechanism by which agencies have to hire and fill their vacancies if we don't have uh, a ready list. So there has to be provisional hiring. We have to manage that. Um, and what we've been up, what, be, what our approach has been is where we see a particular title that has an increase or will have an increase in, in hiring due to a new program or et cetera, we will add that to the calendar uh, and have agencies um, have incumbents fill them or take the exams. But all of the city jobs are publicly noticed um, through internally through ESS and out on uh, public websites like Indeed or other job postings uh, for for the for the public to to see. Um, so, so just along those lines, just to push back a little bit, with the new computerized testing, how many exams that you said there's 800 titles? Do each and every single title have their own individual exam? And how, m how many titles do you oversee total? And of those, how many have you developed the appropriate number of exams on and how many of those are computerized? And I guess where, where I'm going is just if the exam is computerized and you have a computerized uh, testing center, it seems like it could be like the GRE or the uh, GMAT or whatnot where people could just walk in and sit for an exam uh, without much overhead. So some of the exams that we do have are that automated, where it's multiple choice, you get your, your score. However, it doesn't stop there. There, by law, uh, there's a process by which people can appeal any questions that they have, they feel that they've gotten or that were unfair. So there's that added uh, time frame added to the back end. Uh, there are, there's another process where um, people can, um, uh, we, have, we would have to go through and look through the, the seniority and factor in uh, the other, uh, right, uh, that will affect a person's score if you get certain points for being, being a veteran, if, for example. Uh, that gets added to the back end. So at, by the time we prepare a list that's ready to go, we, uh, we, there is l some lag time between exam administration and um, uh, test and uh, list uh, establishment. There's, while the uh, education and employment, education and experience exam is automated, so you key in uh, your experience, the, all of that uh, grading and, and rating is done manually. So currently we're working on an IT uh, project to automate that scoring and a number of other um, functionalities that would allow us to really streamline that piece of it. Uh, so we're hopeful that when that gets underway um, and, and functionality becomes available, we will reduce the time uh, between exam administration and uh, list uh, eligibility. 
brings us to those 91 days. So that, yes, a number of our pro, of, of exams this year have been automated. Uh, the QIE, Qualified Incumbent Exam, uh, which is uh, an ability that we received through the state law that allows us to test provisional workers that have been serving for two years um, in, the, in their title. Uh, that is a truncated and very automatic, um, a very automated uh, testing delivery system. So between test administration and list uh, production has definitely been reduced for that particular testing format. So that 91 is an average of the regular exams Correct. and the qualified incumbent exams. And so I guess the, to, to be very specific, what does DCAS do in order to ensure that people who are coming in as provisionals and then getting the qualified incumbent exam in order to skip the civil service process uh, are not necessarily related to specific people or have financial, uh, financial relationships with people or some of the other concerns that DOI brought up about not your agencies but other agencies that will be coming before us today? The QIE is authorized by law and they are, there are very specific requirements in order to be able to be eligible for that. Um, you have to be serving in the particular title that's subject to the QIE, so it's not every title. It's uh, 198, 193 specifically named titles with, by the legislation. You have to be serving in that capacity for two years, doing that job for two years, and we're not circumventing uh, the, the process. There's an exam that they have to take. Uh, and all of that information, the historical information that checks off whether or not someone was qualified is all under NICAPS and we have a, a person's employment history to verify. So no one that is not qualified to take the exam will be able to sit for the exam.